Hey folks, how's it going? It's Mr. Ray coming to you with a do now video for Course One Honors for uh, Monday, June 1st, 2020. And hopefully I'm not the first teacher to tell you welcome to June. Uh, we're now in the final push of the year. We have about um, effectively three weeks of school left. And so I'm going to be more or less hitting on one final unit, which is going to be probability. Um, I felt like that's the best unit for us to cover in a distance setting. I, I obviously, you know, the ideal situation that would be that we would stay in person, but we know that's not, you know, reality. So this is an opportunity for things for the rest of the year to play out in one of two ways. Either you can work with me, we can really kill this content and end the year on a strong note and enter course two feeling really well about how we're doing. Or if you don't work with me, my fear is that you're going to start off course two behind and that you're going to struggle to get caught up. I know it might not seem like a big deal right now, but I would just really hate for people to look back and say, man, I really wish that I had done that work because I've seen it happen. And the reality is, I would say more than 90% of the people who said that when I would say, hey, you know, you're going to regret this down the line would say whatever, or like not really take it seriously. So if you're thinking that mindset, you know, the same people who, you know, wish they had done more work at certain times also had that mindset at your, at that, that stage in the game. Okay. So remember, I'm here to help. Um, I'll be here tomorrow for um, open office hours at 10 a.m., but you got to seek me out because I can't come to you always, okay? So what I have here is three equations. I'm not going to tell you what type of equation they are, but they are one of the types of equations we've covered since we went on the closure. What I need you to do is please pause the video, solve each equation, and then when you're ready, unpause, and you can see what I got. All right, so believe it or not, these kinds of equations are very difficult to make up off the top of your head. You'd be surprised. Um, so, I mean, if you want like genuinely challenging ones, that is. So here, remember, this is an exponential equation. And so whenever you have an exponential equation, you're essentially getting the bar, uh, not the bars, huh, the bases alone. And then you're going to rewrite the right hand side or whatever side doesn't have the base on it as um, whatever the base is that you got alone raised to the power. And then once you have two expressions with equal bases that are equal to each other, their exponents are the same. And so you saw from there, I'll show you what that looks like. So here you can see that the number in front of the base is effectively one and there's nothing off to the right. So the base already actually starts out alone. And so our challenge is to simply find what power of six is 216. So there's two methods to do this. One that's within kind of the scope of this year and one that students have asked me about and which I'll talk to you about, but is not required. So I'll put a star on this one. So here, First method would be, well, 216. Okay, so 6 to the first is 6. Okay, if I do 6 times 6, I get 36. If I do 6 times 6 times 6, I get 216. Folks, that's not an obvious conclusion at all. So I thought what I would do is I'd pull up my calculator so we could see if we could figure this out. So um, I could do 6 times 6. And I would get 36 and I would do six times six, oh, six times six times six, not divided by, there we go. And I would get 216. So you can see six times six times six is 216. So that means since six times six times six is six cubed, six cubed is equal to 216. You don't need a, a graphing calculator to do this. If you have one, it will obviously work. But if you have any calculator that can do multiplication, then you can effectively do this strategy. Okay. So what I know is that six to the G 
is equal to 6 to the 3 because we know that 216 is equal to 6 cubed. We just showed that. And so you have two expressions that are exponential expressions. And because their bases are equal by the one to one property, their exponents must also be equal. And since G is already alone, we don't have to do any more work. As you're going to see in the third equation, the letter won't be alone, so we'll have to take an additional step. Some students did ask me, Mr. said, Mr. Murray, what about logs? Because I had brought up logs. So let's say you have 6 to the g equals 216, and you're thinking, wow, I'd really love to bring that g down because the g is what I want to find. If only there were some operation, right? Because I know like if I had like 3x plus 2 equals 10, I have subtraction and division. I can always get x alone. And no matter what operations, right, I could have flipped that. I could have been doing division and subtraction instead of multiplication and addition. It doesn't matter. You're always going to be able to get the answer, right? But the thing is, there's no such operation that we know of or have learned of for when I need to get something out of an exponent. Well, that operation is called the logarithm. And what the logarithm does is it will tell me um, essentially what power do I need to raise a number to to get a certain other number. And so what you can do is you can take the logarithm of both sides, just like you can add, subtract, multiply, or divide on both sides. And when the base of the logarithm equals the base of this number, then what will happen is the bases will cancel and that letter will come down. Now we haven't talked about logarithms and that's why this is super, super duper like optional. And if you want to do it and learn about it, cool. But if not, absolutely 100% do not worry about it. So if you take the log of both sides, the only issue is your calculator won't do it um, for many, many people. Sometimes if you have a calculator, I'll try on this one, under the math function, um, log base maybe. So sometimes if you, depending on your calculator, you'll be able to select the base of the log because that's the base you're working with. And then you type in the number that's on the right hand side that you've gotten once you've gotten the base alone and it will actually give you the answer of three. Now, for those of you who don't have that, you might be in trouble because there's not a log key for base six. All you have is log. And when you hit the log button on your calculator, it thinks 10. So to convert it, what you do is this. You do the log of the right hand side, in this case 216, over the log of the given base. In this case, it was six. And that will give you the exact same answer. So I'm going to do the log of 216 over the log of 6. This is called the change of base formula. And you can see that I will get the exact same answer. Again, super optional. But why could this be good? Because first of all, you're going to probably be expecting the right-hand side to work out to a whole number right now because given the kinds of problems we're giving I have to have things working out perfectly so it's gonna work out to some kind of nice number that your calculator will give you all nice or whatever so basically um, you can count on a good number coming out of your calculator if you've done it right the other reason it's nice to use this is because you might not be able to figure out what power of the, a certain base, like if I gave you, I don't know, if I was to give you, um, 40 million, 353,607. And I was to give you seven to the power of G, you would have to guess and guess and guess and guess and guess before you were able to figure out using the method on the left and you would need a calculator using the method on the right. You would just type in the log of four, zero, three, five, three, six, oh, seven. 
and you would get the right hand side would clear out and you'd get the exponent would come down remember and by the way i just kind of made this example up i just typed some numbers in my calculator you would get nine so again the logarithm strategy is super optional if you want to use it it will get around needing to do that trial and error with the bases because it's the only other way to do it but i leave that up to you okay next one is a quadratic equation okay I know that because I see g squared. I don't see any g's in exponents, so it's not exponential. I notice that there is a b value here. So what that tells me is that I need to use factoring. So I start by setting the right-hand side equal to 0. So I get 4g squared plus 28g plus 49 is equal to 0. Remember, the idea is you're essentially making a box and you're working backwards. So remember the square, the, the A stuff always goes in the top left and the C in the bottom right. Now, we have to use patterns to figure out how this whole factoring thing is gonna work. What we notice though, you might notice, is that this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square. So how about we try 2G and 2G and 7 and 7 as our guesses. And I'm going to try that because 7 is the square root of 49 and 2g is the square root of 4g squared. I'm not guaranteed that this will be right, but the reality is I know that there's a few combos that could possibly work. I'm going to have to plug in a whole lot of them and test them over and over. But if this combination turns out to be right, since it often is, then I can save myself a lot of time and frustration. So let's see what happens. Here I'm going to get 14g because it's 2g times 7. Here I'm also going to get 14g because it's 2g times 7. And these add up to 28g. So what I get is 2g plus 7 times 2g plus 7 is equal to 0. In other words, 2g plus 7 squared is equal to 0. It's going to tell me I only have one solution because that factor is repeated twice. So essentially, you're going to get only one number, like one unique number out of those two factors because they're the same, right? So if 2g plus 7 is 0, then 2g equals negative 7, so g equals negative 7 halves, or negative 3.5. I would take either answer because they're equivalent. Um, and so if you were to graph this out, let's say we were to graph this out. I wonder what it would look like. Okay, folks, so I've gone ahead and pulled my graphing calculator back up. And I've gone ahead and I plugged in two different functions. I plugged in the original function, 4x squared plus 28x plus 49, when we set it equal to 0. And I plotted another one that has a similar factorization, except instead of having the second factor be plus 7, I had it be minus 5. Let's take a look at what the graphs look like. You can see that the blue graph, by the way, is the graph of the one we were trying to solve. And the red graph is the graph of the made up one. So you can see the blue graph, when I get to that value of negative 3.5, it gets to the graph, it touches the 3.5, and it bounces right off. However, with the other factors that were not the same, you can see that it goes through one and keeps going. Then it goes through the other on its way back up and also keeps going. This has to do with what we call multiplicity, which means whether a certain factor comes up an odd or an even number of times. Because this factor came up twice an even number of times, it's going to bounce off the graph at that point rather than go through it. It's been tough to see examples, but if you think about it, you've been really seeing them all your life. Every linear function 
has a multiplicity of one. The x-intercept only comes up once. They always go through, right? This one always goes through. So does this one. So does this one. Okay, etc. So last one, we are in an exponential equation, and I'm going to start by subtracting 100 because I want to have bases alone. So I have negative 4 times 2 to the y minus 1 equals negative 64. I divide by negative 4, and I get 16. And right, I'm now in the same place. I could either say, okay, what 2 to the what is 16? So this is a case where the numbers are small, and you could say, okay, 2, that's 2 to the 1. Okay, here's 2 squared. Nope, that's 4. Here's 2 cubed. That's 8. Here's 2 to the 4th. That's 16. That's something that's more realistic, where you probably would not use a calculator, because in the time it would take you to punch everything in, you could do it in your head. On the other hand, you could use the change of base rule that I just talked about. All right, so let's say I'm on my calculator. I'll quit out. I'll just jump back and choose this one. So when we got the right-hand side equal to 0, we were at 16. So it's going to be log 16 because that was the right-hand side. And the base we're working with is 2. So you see we get 4. Okay, either way, you're going to get the same thing. Now, bases are, are equal. Expressions are equal. Therefore, exponents are equal. So y minus 1 is 4. So solving for y, we get y is 5. But in a, in a sense, a really difficult solution ultimately comes down to solving a linear equation in just one step. Now, here I'll show you checking my work. So if I do 5 minus 1, I get 4. 2 to the 4 is 16. Negative 4 times 16 is negative 64. Negative 64 plus 100 is 36. So it checks out. So hopefully this uh, video was helpful to you and you were able to get things right. If so, congratulations. If not, please think about where you might need to kind of fortify your skills. We will be moving on to a new unit. And again, I'm going to reiterate that all work for the old stuff, whether that be quadratics or exponentials, must be completed by this Friday, June 5th. Once I check it, which I intend to do this coming weekend, if it's not done, I'm not going to be putting in. I've given you guys a lot of time to do this, and I need us to move forward and think about what we can do to get the most educational value. If you're afraid that you're not going to get a passing grade based on your work completion and you want to get a passing grade, please reach out to me and I will help you put together a plan to get the work done. I'd rather you do it to me because that way because then I can give you the work that will be the most helpful to you rather than helping you uh, having you turn in a bunch of random stuff just to give it done. Get it done. Okay folks, so thanks again for watching. Best of luck. Don't forget to love math and remember you can do it. All right, until next time folks. Have a wonderful day.